The past two months have been quiet, and that's because I've decided to pour my entire project to the HD rendering pipeline in Unity. The reason for that was because I simply couldn't find a solution to one of the most complicated issues in video game development history. Now before I dive into the main issue, I'd like to take you on a short journey on how lighting works in video games. To simply put, there are four types of light one can have, a directional light, mostly used to imitate outdoor sunlight, a spotlight, mostly used for flashlights, headlights, and lights that are in the shape of a cone, a point light, which can be found on street lamps, light bulbs, and other light sources that light up an area in 360 degree. And lastly, area light which are used to mimic windows, billboards, and street lights. Each type of light has its own way of mapping shadows. Let's understand what shadows are first. Shadows are merely the absence of light. In real life, it is impossible to cast any shadow without a light source of some sort. However, it is possible to fake a shadow using shadow projection and computer graphics. That's a whole nother topic we won't dive into for the sake of time in this video. Unity uses a technique called shadow mapping to render real-time shadows. It uses textures called shadow maps. To simplify shadow mapping, imagine the light as a camera that shoots out light rays. Wherever a light ray does not hit, shadow exists. Imagine yourself in the perspective of light. What you see is what is lit. From an eye point of view, you will see where the unlit area lies. This is a very simplified version of it. If you're curious to learn about the actual calculation behind shadow rendering, I have linked several articles in the description below. Moving along, there are a few lighting modes found in video games. These are different from lighting types. Lighting modes are ways a game engine computes the light sources. There is real-time, baked, and mixed lighting modes. Real-time lighting as well, computing light in real-time. Big lighting is to pre-compute all lighting information onto textures so the computer doesn't have to calculate anything during runtime. It simply loads these textures and apply them to game objects. Mixed lighting combines the two, using real-time lighting for objects that will move and big lighting for static that won't. That's the very basic of how lighting works in a video game. The problem I tried to find a solution for was to get accurate distant point light shadows. I've gone on the forums and emailed several people to try to find a solution to the lighting issue I had. Doing so, I actually got myself going down a rabbit hole. There is just so much about light and shadow rendering in computer graphics. Why some techniques might sound like a good solution, but it's actually quite obsolete in current days. You might have noticed that most modern games were built around this restriction. They would create smaller interior space, or simply avoid using point light shadows altogether. To render shadows for a point light, you need to think of a point light as a cube. Each side of the cube represents the direction the point light is shining towards. That means you will need six shadow atlases to create shadows for a single point light. I only needed one point light, but to get nice distant shadows, I'll be asking the renderer to constantly update six textures in at least 4K resolution to fill the interior space I had. And this is all while the game is up and running. URP simply could not handle such a task. All the internal stuff happening won't allow for such high precision shadow mapping in real time. While HDRP can handle higher precision, it wasn't perfect either. Point light shadows simply weren't made to be used for long distances. Perhaps in the future, when we all have NASA computers to run video games. So, what did I end up doing? Well, after weeks of battling against the issue, I realized I had two choices. One, to write my own render pipeline, which could take weeks or months, or to find another solution to lighting up the tower. I know directional light has no trouble getting accurate shadows because of its relatively cheap calculations. Therefore, I needed a way to get the directional light shining into the tower while keeping the artistic direction I had in mind. To achieve this goal, the tower would need an opening, not just tiny windows, but one that would give enough light to the entire tower. That's where this change came about. 
I think due to the limitation, this solution would be the best bet. If you feel like you know a way to achieve the original idea, comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and smash that like button.